First, by the staff or consultant. Uh, after that, the committee will be given a chance to discuss it, and then after that, the public will be invited to comment. And just make sure if you do comment, to uh, make sure to state your name for the record so we can have it on the recording. So we're on item three now approval of agenda. I would like to make a motion to rearrange the agenda. I would like to move that we move action item A down to after action for the sake of time. So the reason I'm requesting this is that those four performance measures, B, C, D, and E, are timely. We have the way it works is the state adoption their measures and the AMATS has 180 days after they were adopted to approve our targets. And so with the the, not the first one, the safety performance measures, but the other three, that time frame is up this month, so we just need to get those adopted right away. I don't expect any of these to take very much time at all, so we should be able to get through those relatively quickly and go on to the, the item A, the transition improvement program. But just want to make sure, just in case, that it takes a long time, we'll make sure we get through. That was my request. Anybody want to comment on it? So we did, if you remember, as I stated, the, in the FAST Act, the federal authorization bill, they started this uh, process of requiring us to, uh, well, first states uh, have to adopt performance measures to our targets for uh, the four different measures that we have there, the safety measures, the travel time, reliability, payment and bridge measures, and uh, congestion, mitigation, air quality. And the states have to set targets and say, we're going to try to keep these numbers at such and such, depending on what it is. And then 188 days after that, the planning organizations have to adopt their own. And we can either, the planning organization can either adopt our own, we can set our own targets, or we can mirror the state targets. And for the most part, um, we have been mirroring, mirroring the state because the state is the one that typically is collecting all this data. And so it just kind of makes sense since we don't have the ability to collect our own data to mirror the states. And uh, so that's what we've been suggesting all along. With the first one, the safety performance measures, that was the first one that was up. We did set ours last year. I don't remember exactly when we set ours last year, but um, we now have the 2019 targets that the state is setting. And so we're, we're looking to ask you to approve the staff recommendation is to mirror the state's targets on those again. That's kind of it. Aaron, did I miss anything on that? No. Okay. Okay, so does the committee have any, anybody want to discuss this particular item? Okay, so I guess we'll open to the public uh, comment. Is there anybody in the public that we should take? make a comment on this item? Okay, I guess uh, back to the team for consideration. Okay, so we have uh, 
second. So do we want to, do you guys want to do the vote or do you want to just say uh, <coughs> yes? Would you rather do it that way? Okay. Any objections? Any objections to approval? All right, no objections. So we are on to, we're on the seat. <laughs> Did you want to give a spiel on that one too? Former C. Uh, it's the same sort of thing. It's travel time, reliability. Uh, I mean, it's basically looking at, you know, we check the amount of time it takes to get from point A to point B on different routes and you know, we're trying to see if, uh, if we're, it's how you kind of track congestion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's the same sort of thing. It's a, a set of measure there. You can see that uh, on the, in the memo that it says for the interstate, we're looking at staying, you know, the, 22% of the travel time and liability and uh, non interstate. Um, and the two year target is not there, but 40, or the four year target is 70%. So um, these are performance measures that we are supposed to then use when we, when we prioritize projects. We want to look at a project that, if it were hitting the travel time, it's going to try and help us meet that, that target. And that's, the, that's the basic idea. So. We are again with this one asking you to mirror the, the state's targets. Uh, they, they track that. We, we have the, the, the traffic group does some travel time measures for us, but for the most part, it's really the state that tracks all that information. So, any discussion on committee? I move to approve. <laughs> Anybody from the public want to make a comment on uh, we're on item C? Any objections to approval? Okay, hearing none, we're on to D. This would be the pavement and bridge targets, and this is basically part of the notion of the really what percentage are in good condition, poor condition, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see from the, the memo there, talking about what percent in poor pavement condition and good pavement condition, et cetera, et cetera, in the bridge itself. That information is all there. Um, the state tracks this very well, uh, requiring the traffic on the highway, so they track it, and we're just going to mirror those targets again. Right, any discussion from the members? Okay, hearing none, we're on to mitigation and air quality. Uh, these are just basically measuring the, uh, the two, uh, the word I'm for, the two things that we have to track, which is carbon monoxide and particulate matter. We are, there are other ones that the state has to do, but we, are, uh, we don't have any of those issues in our area, except for a uh, uh, limited maintenance area for carbon monoxide and also for PM10 in the Chugaki River area. So those are the ones we have to track that are in our area. And we are asking to the state's number. The state uh, uh, DEC here. Oh, that's not all of the state. We want to monitor that from DHHS and when they're contracting out with the state to do that. So they have the numbers, makes the most sense to mark doing what they're doing. Any discussions from the committee? Okay, uh, any comments from the public? We are on item <coughs> on the agenda. Okay, back to the committee for consideration, please. Move it. Move it. Move it. Any object to approval of this item? No objections. Okay, we are done with back now, correct? Yes. Uh, so for this is the what we're looking to do is uh, we're asking you to release 
or to recommend the release of this for the public hearing ma'am and this would be the document this would be the document that we would take to the assembly and then it would come as well to the policy commission uh, approval. Um, again this is our four year program of projects for the, the exact dollar figure, the exact allocation and what we're going to do with those. We went through this in detail last time with this was the pressure. We Work, we worked the criteria, we put the call for nominations out, we had projects that were nominated, we ranked and scored all the projects in the short range the first 10 years of the MTP. Between the nominated projects and the projects that were in the MTP, we came up with the group of projects that we have listed here. Uh, we put it out in public comment. Um, technically, I, I'm able to remember my agreement times, and so I put the wrong address there for who you were supposed to send your comments to. We put it out four different times. On one of those, I had the wrong address. And so some folks that sent their comments in, we didn't get those comments. So the uh, policy committee suggests that we put it out for an additional uh, time period. So just in case people hadn't had the opportunity to comment, we definitely got the opportunity to comment. So in the, in the large document here, which is, uh, I think it's the third, this is the comment response summary. We again have it broken down to three colors. For all of the new comments, what we did is by the comment number, you'll see an N in front of it. And then the, the second to the last column where it says technical advisory committee comment, it's fine because it's new. And so therefore, you would not have, you didn't get a chance to comment on it yet. The first section here in green are, are comments that we received that really don't need any there are comments from the public saying hey we like that that the uh, party might be and we do that it's great that's in there so there's really no uh, nothing that you need to do on that one um, i think we don't have many in the green section but we start with um n10 and basically it's not n1 because that was the 10th comment that we received and it happened to go into that category so um what we're looking for, I guess it makes the most sense to go to these ones individually because these are all the ones that well, we don't really need any action. You should do them. them in a group if you wanted to, but we really don't need any real action. So that's the first group I think we should go through first. We can, I think this is how we did it last time. We went through all the green ones, had a discussion, asked for comment, came back, and then we wrote it on the green one. We leave it to the next how many people you want to give it a point? Can you remember what the yellow yeah. comments are? Okay, so the green comments are ones that don't require any action. Okay. The blue comments were all northern access. Okay. And the yellow comments are uh, things that were, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, above our favorite. Staff can't make the decision on them. The TAC needs to make the decision on them. Or it's at a level of policy that we need to make the decision on Staff can't take projects out. Staff can't split projects in half. Staff can just say, we go. So the last time we did this, you just presented all the green at the same time. We did all the green at once. I think people just went through and like, stepped in the other place for each one and said, yeah, that's good, that makes sense, no company needed, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So correct real quick, any of the discussion I had from last month, good. Yeah. Comments? In the green comments? Uh, I'm not gonna be yellow, actually. I know, I know we had a discussion on the Academy Bank for Oh, we had some uh, yeah, did we have that? I don't remember. Okay. We had some yeah. yeah. comments on that. We had comments on it. It should be reflected in here. Yeah. Okay. the most sense is if you just wanted to have a quick discussion on any of the ones in green and then you could ask the public if they have any comments on the ones in green and then you come back and look at each one and say 
So that's the idea of the, the, the center section of the from uh, uh, Northern Lines, from the southern, actually from, sorry, from Benson to um, just past 36th to, to, to Minnesota. The comment, there have been several comments saying, how might you break out the section of that potential couplet from that centerpiece? And because maybe the centerpiece is not controversial. Okay. The language that staff Usually, put this project in the tip is the language of the entity, so that's why we said staff can't change the language. I mean, you could the the TAC could decide we want to recommend to the policy committee to break those separately. We could do that. So, so I'd like to have a discussion with the committee about whether or not we should. Which that one that concept is in when we get down to the yellow comments. That concept was in that throughout. So it's a little bit in the green, but it, it seemed like the, the green comments were, uh, weren't were necessarily asking to split it up. It was just kind of generically talking about okay. it. We will, we definitely have it in the yellow. So maybe hold that conversation for a second. Yeah. Okay, so. Mr. Okay, so are there, we're just going to focus on the green section right now. Is there any discussion from the committee about? Comments in the green section. Okay. Then we will uh, take comments from the public. And we're just looking at the green section under the. Uh, and that's uh, just comment responses. And just from the green section, please, if anybody has a comment. are all comments related to the Northern Access Road Expansion Project. Uh, and so you should be able to go down to the bottom of the line that time. Um, start. Um, I don't have too much to say. We talked about it in detail before. Um, there are a number of comments in support of it. And a number of comments in support of it. Opposed to it, but this time we have a few comments in support. So, um, I remember you can see the TAC action last time was recommended removal of the land with about a 0.5 mile four lane facility with nine motorized facilities. That was removed from the project description and it was forwarded to the PC for consideration. So, that's the action the TAC took last time. And you can respond to it. All the rest of Northern Act, that's one the same way if you want it, or to make a different motion, I guess. It's the left for you. Okay, so the community wants to discuss the new items. The project would be No, just the, it, 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 for just, the just that it would change, it would delete part of the language in the tip. You, um, but the project itself would still exist. 
project itself would still need to submit the okay, just change the language a little bit. Okay. Um, the, the current language says construct northern access to the University Medical District at 0.5 mile for the facility for non motorized facilities. So when you look at this last time, you recommend so the language would stay in there, and all of it says North Access University Medical District construct North Access University Medical District. And the rest of the language would be stricken. So it really doesn't put lines of scope in here. Right. So what does that functionally do to the tip? How are people going to know what the scope of the project is? I'm not a meat expert, so okay. I would say it's pretty bare bones description of what the project does. Is that yeah. anything, right? It could be a, a park, I don't know, or access. <coughs> so, I mean, if this somehow stays in the tip and we have to evaluate it, like score and evaluate it, but we don't have a scope on how to judge that. Um, how, do you, how do you evaluate well, uh, the criteria against this? So when we, when staff evaluated the project using the project criteria, uh, we used the language that was in the UTP, which includes that language about 0.5 mile for a facility of non motorized facility. Okay. Um, so if it gets in the tip, it's in there with the first money being the design. And so you know, a project manager at BOT would then start the process of how we go about the design for it. Yeah. yeah. So, I think uh, the language that's in there, I don't know that it would make much of a difference for you to start that process. But again, I'm not a new back. Right. I am uh, kind of doing the math on it. So we've got a scope that defines a you know, rough cost estimate for whatever the project is. Like. But if we pull out the, the project description and it just becomes some kind of ambiguous connection from DIA to DOT I don't know how you estimate that. Yeah, I, I, the only answer I can give you is that's what the TAC decided last time we had it before you guys voted to take that language out and send it on to the policy committee. And I think that that, that was somewhat due in that there was in the UMAG district plan, there was a statement that there should be a traffic moving model. Am I using the right acronym? PDM. Yes, thank you. And that that would really identify the scope. And I think some of the concern about as it was written with that language in there is that we were kind of identifying what that scope would be and there seemed to be a concern from the public that that kind of defined what the height for the project would be removing it, giving it back to let's do that required TDM and develop the scope because maybe the connection is something other than what we see it as today. So a predetermined alternative. Correct. For a priority going through the mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so we are on who? We are on item A. <laughs> yes. We approved the other ones on the agenda. Just make sure we're that. We're on item A and we're in um, right now we're having a committee discussion on the blue section. <laughs> The description, this is the description then that is in the empty draft, correct? Yes. Okay. And what was the justification for it in uh, the staff level when you developed the empty? For why that project was in there? Uh, for why there's a description, a uh, four line description. Wow. Do you have any idea, Aaron? I don't know. It's well, been it was done during the 2035 MTP, so that was quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember why it was decided upon. The interim MTP, uh, which was done in 15, 16, was just carrying that forward. And so when we looked at this project in, for the TIP scoring, we looked at what was in the interim MTP, and then just went forward with that. So m much of the blue we've already the responses to, uh, but there are new comments that you've had. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, my thought, of course, is that you've got, it's the same project, and 
we've got a lot of comments on it, additional comments, and I would think you would want to, okay. you could just keep the same response of what you had recommended in the start. Okay. And all of the, uh, the, the late coming letters from the university and from other community committee members, those were incorporated in it. You said they're all in here. Okay, so, okay. Any other community members want to have any discussion on public comment on this? Okay. Any other public comment on this? No? Okay, we're going to open up this uh, blue section for public comment. If anyone has any comments on this, could you, could you please remember to state your name? Uh, my name is Paige Coatney. That's spelled C O A T N E Y. And um, as Mr. Lyons said, there were the numbers, there were the number posed. I should like to point out five in favor, and um, only five out of 39 in favor. And that was all after the original deadline. And the thing about the original deadline, I'd like to just make a recommendation. Um, when I voted, or when I expressed my displeasure of this still being on the tip, I went directly to the AMAS website. And I submitted my comment at that website. Uh, not to Mr. Lyons, because I wanted it at the website. And one thing I was kind of surprised about when I submitted it, um, most um, government um, websites I've gone to about submitting a, a comment or request, I immediately get an email response back stating, we've uh, received your comment, uh, thank you for responding. And I was kind of surprised when I got none. So I didn't even know if mine got um, through. So I would recommend that that be an automatic, uh, automatically generated response. Anytime somebody clicks on that link, it's a comment. Um, that way you verify, and I verify that it's actually gone through. Um, the other thing is instead of, and actually have no comment uh, to Mr. Alliance because it is a, a public access. And so that way Mr. Alliance doesn't have to go through every single one through his own work email. Um, that's all accessible through anybody who has access to the AMET website um, on the, side and that way we all there won't be any confusion in the future and it would just say you know submit all comments at the uh, AMAT website so there's no description any, no discrepancy um, I think that would really clear up a lot of future problems so that was that was really my only comment just a, uh, a procedure one so it didn't happen again we wouldn't have any extensions or any discussion. so especially that feedback part really that one Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do you have any, uh, I'd like to keep in mind that there's a three minute limitation. My name is Barbara Carl, K A R L, and I want to point out that on page 22 in the chart, uh, my later comment for UMED is, is not in the UMED comments. It's uh, I think we put it down below because it, it wasn't it wasn't simply related to Northern Access. It talked about you know, short and long term and the, this TDM study. So it seemed like it was, um, yes, it was related to the Northern Access, but it was kind of a different area that we definitely wanted the committee to be aware of and make a decision on. We didn't just want to dump it into the one side or the other for Northern Access. We wanted them to see that it was a little different. That's why we added it down below. But it's listed as UMED. It is, but it, the language talks about the TDM and other things of that nature that we just wanted them to, we don't want to get lost in the UMED part. Because your regular, you, your original UMED comment is still in there. That was our thinking on that. Okay, uh, additional comments? Public comments? 
Okay, we are back to the committee consideration of the new section. Okay. I apologize for Sorry. being late. Uh, my name is Laura Carmack, C A R M A C K. I'm with the University of Alaska Land Management Office. I was just reviewing the comment listing and I just wanted to note that a letter from Christine Klein, the Chief Lands Officer, was submitted on a comment letter for support of the Northern of the Unit Project was submitted on September 12th. It was included at the last meeting in the packet uh, we received at the last meeting. I just don't find it listed in this uh, summary list here. And I just wanted to point that out. Like you received at the last meeting. Yeah. It probably just could have yeah. been just a text. But that guy that came in. I just wanted to make note of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those were these comments here. Well, it's not, I mean, it's not specifically written out. It was in that pack stack of extra comments that you received last time. The ones that had graphics or other things of that nature that, or they came in a little late. So we wanted to, as a separate thing, you got to see. Right. I thought I had asked the question of all the, the committee council comments and stuff had been incorporated. And I thought they were. So that may be one we dismissed. I thought we had them all. Any uh, additional comments from the public on this item? Okay, thank you. Now we're back to you for consideration. I think that it was asked in the Committee sees it, they'll see it as in the tip with the you know the red line strike out. Mm -hmm. So the, the policy committee can change whatever they want, they can decide not to accept your recommendation, but it will go up to them as this way so they can see what the recommendation is. So, so it would go to them as that we recommended that it move forward with those with that strike out, mm -hmm. okay, but not the addition not necessary. Mm -hmm. Again, these are ones that we're asking you to take some action on because they do. So we we'll probably need to go for these individually. Um, you have, you have some other yeah, I think I'm kind of the fact that I see five of them that you need to discuss. And you're right, you have some recommendations to make some comments based on the make sure. Starting with N11 on that's the best that I have to So the, well, okay, so we're at, 
committee is having a discussion on this yellow section right now. Right, but which committee were discussing this yellow section that have not already addressed? Right, you have not already addressed it. Okay, so okay. it's based on the last five. And as, as it couldn't be filled up, we're going to want to address each one of those separately. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion from the committee right now? Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take some public comment on the yellow section on the um, rep tip comments and response. And uh, keep in mind, uh, you can say your name and you have three minutes. My name is Cheryl Richardson, and I'm wondering when we might receive comments on um, sections of the yellow that are, have not been responded to. What is the timeline for receiving a response? That's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. We're going to. Well, there's no written. South Edition Committee Council submitted a comment. A request and there is in the but when I looked online there's no uh, yeah I think it's right here blank on the response yeah. you are responding the, to the, the yellow section are comments that were received that were items that the TAC and the policy committee need to make a decision on they were not items that the staff we can't make decisions on removing a project from the tip we, the technical aspects okay. are just that so this is when uh, that will, be, will be received. So, staff doesn't have a comment on this. We'll so you'll be going through the inventory and provide the comments? Yes. So, any other comments on the, just the other section? We're going to go into each one of them. Carl, K-A-R-L, um, I'm like N11, uh, although it was second and more than that, apparently it was viewed as being more than that, I strongly urge that traffic demand study, TDM, be formed as mentioned in the UNED plan. Any other comments on the overall section before we get into the individual ones that haven't been commented on yet? All right, thank you. So what's our what's our first one, Craig? But it's her comment. It's my understanding is that it's a request to do a TDM study. Yeah, which is for that area. Ten eleven. Ten eleven. So asking to do that study and then that would be we just have to add that project in. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do these individually now. Uh, we'll have the committee, uh, we'll have a discussion on it, and we'll go to the public comment. And we'll go to the Does anybody in the committee have a comment on this particular item? I've heard my current comment is this first place to move from the other two. The northern access? Yeah. yeah, it's in our existing. So the chart range was the traffic demand model or some kind of model done to as, as part of the <coughs> Yeah, every time we do our MTP updates or MTPs, we do you know traffic demand. We, uh, the, we run our model, <coughs> and that's how these projects get put in there, along with all the other efforts that we do. But that's one of the things we do. I don't know that there's a this type of study that done in each individual one, but but, but there has been a TDM already. Two different things. Yeah, two different things. The transportation demand model, and when we're talking about the transportation demand management strategies. Oh, okay. So two different, two different things. Yeah. So when we had this conversation at the last TAC meeting, it was my understanding that because the way it's written in an MTP, it doesn't include the TDM, and that's why we couldn't just change the language completely to say we were going to do it, we recommend doing the TDM. However, it was also my understanding that that would let you first 
phase of where get this project to are funded, that would be the first step before going into design. Is that <laughs> is that something that we can be assured of, or do we need to be more specific in saying that? Well, that's what I kept trying to punt the mystery on last time. I said, I'm not a NEPA expert. I don't know how these things are run. I don't know. I mean, it's usually a TDM study is a separate creature by itself run for a certain area. And you do the work and you get your input, so on and so forth. When we did the NTP update, we, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but one of the things that we use is the, you know, our TransCAD model. That's up. I'm assuming a small portion of what a TDM study does. I mean, it sure uses probably some model updates and some other stuff, and it does it does this study, and it comes up with recommendations. So the idea is we have this Northern Access project in there. I would imagine some kind of TDM study might be done as part of the, the PE or the design, or maybe just the PE when you preliminary engineering when you do a full road project, but I don't know for sure. Okay. It may not be as robust as what folks are looking for here, a more robust TDM study for that area that would be a separate project, separate standalone project before you do that, but I'm not the expert. Okay. So I happen to have the project manager on you been previously sitting out here in the audience. So, uh, Eric, um, when you were managing this project, was it were there traffic studies involved at when you were developing the project or the UMID? Yeah, there were, there were four alternatives that were considered that had different routes, not just to Law Street Extension, but one to Northern Lights and one through campus, I believe. Uh, anyway, yes. So there were traffic studies completed prior to developing the final scope of the project? Yes, as part of the uh, environmental alternative section. I just I don't remember his name. I'm sorry, Eric Marchero. So he was uh, he was the He's the preliminary design section chief right now, but he was the project manager for the project for the whole time of the project uh, for a while until I was until I got promoted. Then uh, John Basky took over. Oh. Follow-on question, Eric. Um, Eric did uh, did the. Um, uh, the effort analyzing alternatives. Do you, you look at any of the um, traffic demand management kind of uh, options and alternatives, and what the effects would be? You know, uh, is there any analysis or consideration given to which? You know, uh, I just can't follow the top of my head right now. I okay. sorry, was your What was that? We we didn't hear your answer. Your oh, I I I, uh, I can't recall. I mean, it's a, it was a few years ago. Thank you. Um, Carol Wong, Long Range Planning Manager. We're still, we're still. Um, yeah, we're still talking in the community. Right? We'll take comment, comments in a minute. I was going to add to his answer here regarding the CDM. Um, I'm going to wait till public comment. No, that's okay. You can. Sorry. So no, as long as the committee member wants a clarification, that's fine. Okay. So as part of the UMED district plan, the, trans, um, the demand management TDM study was highlighted because it looked at more than just the road network. It said that if there were additional bus service in this area, how would that change the traffic uh, transportation? <coughs> If there were more bike, non-motorized bike head trails in this area, how would that change the demand? So it was more than just a road network analysis that was identified as a need for a true TDM study. discussion last time was, should we do a TDM study in conjunction with this, or should we do a separate standalone? Um, Ms. Carl can clarify, but I think she's asking, 
that we do a separate standalone TDM study. Yeah, so that's what we're asking you guys to decide, and maybe it's something the policy committee needs to decide. But it would be adding a project to the study portion of this TIP to do a TDM study for that area. Can I ask a question to staff? Um, did we, in the past, do a uh, TDM study that was on a broader scale and specific to the uh, uh, <coughs> I don't think so. Yeah, we've had a study. TDM studies are pretty rare here in Anchorage. I don't think we've done one. I guess my concern would be that if you're um, doing studies independent of an actual project, then when we go to actually, if the project is asked, if we're asked to actually do the project, I'm not sure that we can use that data that happened. It might be a little stale. Independent of the project. Yes. It has to get a connected action to the project. And in the NEPA process, it all kind of has to be, it all has to flow together. So I, I appreciate your position of wanting to do a, a, a traffic demand model. But I think doing that independent of the, doing the actual project, we wouldn't be able to use that, that information and it would be money thrown away. So does it go back to then, the, going back to our comments in blue, I mean, I guess I'm gonna ask the question one more time. Can we just include a requirement to include a TDM in that language? And why can't we just add that into that so it's connected to a project? <laughs> um, I would question me that um, I, I see staff and I really wanting to add something here. Can I, he's turning bright red, can I ask him to, uh, if, uh, if Mr. Young Allen has an opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Aaron Young Allen, uh, senior planner with AMATS. Um, just so everyone's aware, generally a TDM study would be something you would do before you initiate a road project to see if you even need to do the road project or not. Instead, you do the TDM study to take a look at the parking, parking structures, parking pricing, transit, bike, ped, other improvements besides that. And I think that's what members of the community have been saying for quite some time. So if you did a standalone TDM study, that's what it would be. It'd be contained with that and then would say, do we need the UMED project or not? It's not do the TDM study and immediately flow into the UMED project, um, as far as I understand. So if the TDM model came back that showed that we do need the UN district, the UNED connection, what I'm hearing from Mr. Young is that because it was approved absent of a, that project, that independent of the project, that that data might not even be used as part of what we have as the road project. Is that, am I correct in my understanding? I, mean, I guess would it be for not, or would we just redo the project? I guess what happens? What happens if it shows that we need? Then I think a decision has to be made to determine if you want to move forward with the project or not. And you can always use some of that data, but it won't be. It, it won't be. Uh, you have your environmental document done at that point. You will have to start completely over. You'll just be able to take some of that to help supplement what you've used. Uh, I, I guess, I don't know. And then from the community standpoint, then it would provide the support that either the road is necessary or it, it validates the road and whatever constitutes what that project is. One would assume, yes. But, okay. And that wasn't already done in preparation for the LRT. It's not the same thing. A uh, transportation demand model is not the same as a TDM because transportation demand model is basically looking at the network saying where the traffic is flowing, and then, oh, there's congestion here, so put another road in. It doesn't actually look at... It's a no-build. It doesn't actually look at, well, what about other options? You know, it's harder to get the model to basically be able to say, what are people going to choose besides road, when all it is is really a road model? Or a car, sorry, a vehicular, a single occupancy vehicle. And so, I'm sorry, because we're using the TDM interchange. <laughs> <So> we are. <laughs> and when you, you just referred to a traffic demand model, so that's what was completed. But what the community is asking for is a like trap. Transportation demand management study. <laughs> a which, TDMS. Which, yes. is diff which, which is different. It, it looks at, totally. instead of just the road, building another road, it looks at, are there other things? 
Thank so you. really we need to modify Ms. Carl's comment that a TDM S should be completed. I think she refers to it as a TDM yeah, study. Yeah, she says TDM study. Okay, okay. So and I just want to make sure she's getting what she... <laughs> and we had started to go down that road. We, as former AMAT staff, had started to go down the TDM study road, and I believe it's in the 2018-19 UPWP. So um, that is something that we had, had started after Madison, the mayor of Madison, came in, and we had that group of that was added in the UPWP. So, I think that was getting ready. <laughs> so, does that state that that's funded? It's, it's the planning grant. Yeah, it's not fully funded. No. It's, yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's our work program. It's if if there's a source of funds to do the study, we have a program to say staff will be managing that, but we don't have one there yet. That's good. Yes, sir. Where does this project sit now? Do you have a record that says which will be at the Chevy Way? Do you have anything to do with the article? Sure. Where did the project end off in? Pardon? Where did the project end when, when we shut it down? Uh, I think we had a, uh, a about a 70% design. But that facility was for a two-lane road, my understanding was. No, 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 four-lane road. So we would have had to have an environmental document, right? Uh, there's, there's always an environmental document when there's a federal action. The federal action in this case would have been the wetlands permit. Okay. But it wouldn't have all the things that we'd normally, normally have in a FHWA document, which would be the 4F, 4 yeah. It was state-funded. It was state-funded. So it was state-funded. Yeah. So state the only federal document would have been the Corps of Engineers for the wetlands <coughs> permit. That's correct. And did you ever receive that permit? I don't think we. I don't know if we had it or not. I don't think we did. I know what we were. We worked on the application. But I'm not sure that we ever got it. Usually, that's at the very end. Right. Okay. What's on? Right. Chair, is there a distinction, Eric, between um, the level of effort that goes into a uh, the document? where it's not federally funded through FHW way, but he's uh, simply looking at um, obtaining a, a Corps of Engineering permit for wetlands. Uh, that one would have been uh, a little less because uh, all funding through the, uh, the uh, Department of Transportation has something uh, called 4F, which, which uh, prevents the, uh, the, uh, the agency, that being FHW way, FAA, FTA going through parklands essentially and recreational areas. It, I, funding through the Department of Defense doesn't have a restriction for other federal agencies. So that's a little bit unique and it, it can be quite onerous. In this case here, a lot of people use this for recreational purposes, so it would be kind of an onerous uh, hurdle to get through for federal funding. And that's true even though this is uh, primarily ATU land. I think we, we would because it's a use <coughs> necessarily, you know, the, uh, I think I think we would, but you could make, also make a call of that since it's private land, maybe not, you know, so. If I could follow up here then. Um, so this would be more a detailed analytical effort looking at a variety of alternatives, correct? Yeah. And then one of those alternatives that would be looked at would have to be the, uh, build alternative? That's correct. Uh, the um, all reasonable alternatives have to kind of be looked at, and the alternative with the least overall harm is the one that you go with. Well, out of curiosity, this was state funds, and it remains in the town. Do we have what type of money is going to fund it eventually? Because you have a not necessarily complete action from the core and you dump FHWA or some other fund into this at a later date, you're going to have to go through the process anyway. Yeah. I think the original Elmore extension was used with 
without federal funding. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it got us around the four F issues. It results in a truncated process, state checklist process. Uh, that section was a state grant. Or state state. Grant. No, not federal money. Right. Was, was the Which, federal or state? We're still, we're still at the community discussion hall, so we'll take public comments here in a minute. Question. So, I, so we, what we're, what's before us now is what TAC comment is going to be on this particular item. Correct. Now, when you guys did this last time, did we discuss the comment and then we, we have the discussion with the public or did you, we have a discussion? I remember correctly what we did last time is we did, what we did for the other two sections is ask for comments. And once the public had the chance to comment, then it came back to you and you just or not what you wanted to do. There, once it comes to you, you're really not a, another opportunity for public comment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, is there more discussion for the committee on this particular? Okay. okay. We're going to open up. Uh, well, we are on N11, right? Okay. We're going to open up N11 for all the comment. Stay through the anchor through the comment and Mind that you have three minutes. My name is Cheryl Richardson, and I was trying to clarify my understanding that previous funding for the provide extension to the unit was done under state dollars. So this federal separation thing is not appropriate. Is so that's one point. I have two more. Is there an official reading on when information becomes stale? Because I've seen stale information go into documents, and I'm just curious if there's an official, you know, January 1, it's stale. Is there a deadline? Is there a rule? Is there a practice policy? Okay. I, I think that'd be good to answer. And then I guess the other point I'd just like to make a comment that um, if a transportation demand management study shows that there would be horrendous congestion, you can still go ahead and live with horrendous congestion. That's an option. In some places, choose to protect this space or that space by not building a project. So I would just like to cut that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have any, uh, anybody else who wants to make a comment on Run in a lot of public. Okay, so we're back to committee for consideration of this item, and I assume we are uh, trying to come up with a, a response comment. Person, but 
first single, single person by person vote. That's really so really the motion before us is. Can we read the motion? Yes. .5 mile four lane facility with non motorized facilities from the project description. So the mirror was the stuff that we had passed. Right, that was my language. So, do we want to start on this again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I just have to say, can we clarify if that is, are these two opinions? Opposite? Okay. So basically, I'm stating that I'm not going to support the, the motion at hand. Um, but if it passes, then we'll live with it. If it fails, then we'll have the motion put on the table. Or, or, okay. Yeah, the, the motion, I mean, the, the comment, the public comment is they do this TDM study first. And Mr. Post is recommending that we just mirror what we have in the rest of the comments to Northern Access, which is remove the language, but don't do not do a study. Can we do both? I mean, can we still recommend it before the policy committee, but also recommend a standalone study? I, I think you should. Yeah. 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 I first failed in the I mean, you can. 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 But the TDM, or, or we could vote in, and we could have another another motion. Is it, is it possible for me to ask clarification from Eric again as to when we are looking at alternatives as a part of this project, and you're look, forced to look at all reasonable alternatives? What are we looking at other non-road construction alternatives as part of the, the project itself? Uh, sure, why not? I mean, it depends on what you have as your purpose and need, right? Your, if your purpose indeed is to improve access and flow to the unit district, you need to consider all the terms that would provide that. You need that purpose indeed. But I think, so my understanding is that the only way that we can be assured that we're going to get to the work on the study that we need, that the community wants, is to actually ask for a separate TDM study. So my understanding of that is if we just move the <coughs> forward as it is, that there won't be a guarantee that it's that in-depth of level of study that the community is requesting. Is that correct? I, I'm reading the comments here, and I, I don't think whether you do a TDM study or not will make any difference for most of these comments. It's, that's not the basis of their objections. You were opposed to this, I think uh, one of our previous commenters said, you can live with congestion in the area. So there's, uh, you know, that. so if you think, if you believe that, study would now convince people that, this would be a good thing, then I, I, I would say it's a good idea, but uh, I don't know that it would make any difference to the people who post this project. You would provide more information. So, to be clear, what you're thinking is to uh, move the party forward, but I don't know. I actually like to say, I think both. I would like to move the party forward, but also do it. Whatever TDM stands for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. So that could be a friendly amendment to your motion. If that were to support a friendly amendment to include uh, the TDM study as far as I can. That's good. You want to just like it? And second, I concur with that. All right, we have a second on the amendment. Friendly amendment. Okay, so you guys can help me out over here. Now we're going to vote on the amendment. Right? We have to vote on the amendment before we. What's that? The friendly amendment. Okay, so as long as the. Added to the main. Right, as yeah. long as Dave agrees to it, then we don't have to. As long as the maker of the motion right. and whoever seconded it agrees to add the friendly amendment, then you're good with that. And now you vote on the amendment. Okay. All right, good. Or you vote on the motion. So can someone repeat the motion? Can you repeat the motion? Sure. Um, so uh, the amendment to the motion would have been, um, um, I believe, uh, it was, uh, you know, the project shall also consist of uh, TDM study. Alternatives. Okay, so we're all clear on that, and we're. Do 
Okay, do we have any objections to that? Okay, okay, so we're gonna pass that on. why it's like it maybe that we didn't answer before I'm not sure I don't remember that coming up before us. well it's 52 it's, on page 20 yeah 52 on page 20. We're, we're about to talk about that topic there it's, I think it's, it's the next staff might be clarification uh, originally <laughs> comment 52 uh, originally comment 52 was under the green section but after reviewing it in light of the other comments that have been coming in, it was uh, recognized by staff that it needs to be addressed like the other spinard about decoupling the couplet from the rest of that spinard project. So it was moved down, and whatever actions taken on that will be applied to this one as well. So there you go. Thank you. It was fixed. No word. All right. So we're on N12. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, we are. Uh, I don't want to make this easy. Uh, okay, so we are at a committee discussion on N12. And the basic gist of this public comment, again, is which we've received a few of these, is we have that project that goes on our road from Benson to Minnesota and includes the car at the end of the 36th. And the suggestion has been separate the cut portion of it, which mm -hmm. might attract some controversy, and do that centerpiece, which we might be able to do without too much problem. And so the request is to separate it out. And that is not a staff level thing. We, we can't separate it out like that. That's what we have to do. So it's before you now to adjudicate the cut. Okay, you can deal with your kick it upstairs. We have a community discussion on N12. Just a quick question. I separated out still within tip full portions. Uh, well, it's up to the committee or the policy committee to decide do you just want to do the <coughs> intersection? Do you want to break it up and do both of them in there? I, I don't know. All right, so we ranked and scored the project from Benson to Minnesota. Okay. That's what we ranked and scored the whole project because that's how it's described at the MTP. Okay. I guess I want to see that on it during this question to make sure I understand. So we could decouple it or take it out. It wouldn't necessarily take everything out of it. We just be careful how we work it to make sure that the whole part of it is out. Yeah, the language, the language in the tip says, project will rehabilitate from Benson Boulevard to Minnesota Drive to improve traffic flow. It includes Spinard Road, 36th Avenue Crossing. So that's the language that's in the MTP. So imagine if you just take out that last sentence, then you're taking away a portion of the couplet, and then you need to change the Spinard Road the language of the road. So it says Benson Boulevard to 36th, I would think. And if you take away the couple parts, then you know, say it's a project. If you want to do just that as a separate one, and if you want to do your add another project in, I recommend adding it. Oh, we have a work session going up on this one point. Yes, we do. We are trying to schedule it. Seems to me that this is kind of serendipitous that we're trying to figure this out, and we're trying to figure that out. Going to figure it all out at once. Well, it's, I mean, the timing is not excellent because they're just getting ready to present a draft. So they're not right. ready to be approved for a while. Uh, you How long until we do any of this? Oh, I'm hoping really soon. 
Oh, you mean when we would start a project? Yeah, scoping all the stuff. Well, let's assume that we could get this through the assembly and maybe approved by the policy committee in December time frame. Okay. So well, we have to run the risk of going through and doing all this and then having a plan for three months later that says something else. I, That's unfortunate, but well, and I don't I don't know how to you know move satellites around and all the other stuff that's associated with this, but I I don't know what to say to this until I see that and that I don't know that I've seen the new one, but by the time we get through this and that happening, there's some way that we can get these two in a bar together and buy them a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with Mr. Lundin. It's out of context, I think, and to have a broader discussion, more holistic discussion with the NASCAR. I mean, this is, quite frankly, this is a developer. And, and, and I get that, and that's a good perspective to have. But I think that I've also heard, uh, you know, other comments from the community, from the community council there to have concerns as well. I would want to make a decision without their input. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say that it, there, there is one developer who's the comment is here, but there are at least two or three other comments that say, please separate them. So it's more than just one developer. It's community council, et cetera. So that's why I, mean, I can't, staff can't make this decision. You, you, you guys are in the hot seat. You can kick it up to the policy committee if you want, but it's not a staff level decision for a lot of reasons. Was Mark Butler making his comment on behalf of himself or on behalf of the community? Do we even have to mention the couplet in this thing? I mean, this goes from, actually, it goes from 30th. We just finished working on Benson up to 30th, rehabilitating Athens. We can leave Benson, if you just say, up to Minnesota. And then in the um, whatever process is through the the that's going to take it, that may be the solution for that section from 36 to Minnesota. But I don't even know if we even need to mention it. Well, you could kill two birds with one stone by just saying may include the coupling. If we even need to say it right now, because we don't, we don't even know until the study is done. So we can do stopping after Spinard no. and deleting runway couplets. No, we yeah, yeah, I'm suggesting just taking out the statement about the couplet because I, I don't know. If that's, I mean, that's been talked about for quite a long time, but it's you just say that the project, this project is over. Benson to Minnesota. I mean, is there anything that would, by you doing that, is there anything that would preclude that from happening if in further studies down the line it's determined that the couplet is needed there, 36 and Minnesota? I don't know that it would, but I. I think if you took out that language, then but left the parameters at uh, whatever comes out of Springfield Road would be timely uh, and will help uh, feed into the whatever happens with the design, which we have projected would be clarified. It would just be another piece that gets fed into the discussion. Uh, I guess my concern would be. Eric's example, but I think we're going to go on a purpose and need it. It's, it's described as trying to fix Spinard Road. Um, you know, really, uh, a lot of the benefit of that outlet actually happens to be on other portions of the network. And that could be ignored you know, if, if you know, really the focus is on the Road. Um, we have Minnesota Boulevard backing up routinely in the evening. And that was one of the primary benefits there. And so I, 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 I think we need to be a little bit careful, you know, by saying that we have the flexibility still by being that ambiguous about it. 
your point, though, I think we run into the same risk. Um, there's two different versions of the case. I can fix my wife's problem with her laptop by throwing it away. <laughs> but we run the risk of having the same problem we have at UMED when we're trying to fix a greater transportation problem and the neighborhood that's underneath the fix isn't exactly thrilled with the way it's going when it's done. My concern would be that we're elected not to look at that. Yeah. I mean, we're not saying I'll look at it, but I think we need to look at it within the context of that's been our very plan. And I think once that plan is complete, that's the color potentially some of the solutions that are used as to the design. Discussion from the committee on this item. Okay, we're going to open. Uh, we are on N12. We're going to open that up for public comment. Remember, you can state your name. You have three minutes. Uh, any other one comment on N12? I just had a question. I think on the studies, there's. Uh, oh, 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 who are you? Who are you? Oh, John <laughs> Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Chugach, there, there's the Spinard transportation oriented development plan that's still being worked on. Is the Spinard right? quarter, I think. Quarter, quarter, quarter plan. plan. And then the Chugach Way sub plan of that? Or What's the that? The, that's included in the tip is to do the Chugach Way um, master. area master plan. And that's the one you're talking about. Will that include this? It's in that area, but it doesn't. Well, the Spinard corridor study, which we're working on a work session probably next Friday, uh, is. is would include this whole it area. Which is that. So it's a spinard corridor plan. Yeah. The two catch way one is going to be almost even more like a specific part of that. So Any other comment from the public on M12? Can I say the action on this uh, staff comment, DC comment on this. I like Jerry's kind of, I like Jerry's way of just saying, let's just remove the, the couple of reference, but keep the project in there. I'll and second that. Okay. <laughs> so we have a motion. We have a motion to really, um, so it should say Spinard at Minnesota Drive to 36 and Spinard and delete one of the It says it includes Spinard Road 36 and Yes. Everything else would stay the same. Does that go all the way to Minnesota? It says Benson to Minnesota. That would be stay in there. So when you close it, it just would I assume it. but the basic gist of it was asking for complete streets studies. You can see in the, in the comment in the middle, uh, complete streets studies of A, C, I, and L Street within the next year that will identify capital improvements needed to make the roadways compatible with the Jimmy's and Homes and neighborhood character, take into account the traffic, slow traffic speeds and noise, promote improved transit service, allow people to safely walk along and across the streets, encourage more people to walk and bicycle. So that was the comment. Discussion <coughs> on the side of the board of public comment. This is all approved now. No. We don't have a, we have not adopted our complete streets policy. So she's asking us to, you know, something that is still in here. Well, this says complete street study. I'm not sure what a complete street study is. So I don't know exactly what that means. Our complete streets policy is different from the policy. I'm assuming that they're probably just asking for a study that looks at these items and 
context so. of yeah. whether or not they need to complete streets. The concept of complete streets because we don't have a complete streets yeah. premature so we really have a document policy. It's interesting because they're also working on a neighborhood plan. And I feel like even though this wouldn't be addressed in that level, I feel like that neighborhood plan needs to be better. So maybe when we're drafting the police station, station on the district plan, and that would say in the context to actually do this study. Could you repeat? I'm sorry, but I've got to hear back here. Um, it's, I was just saying that I, I believe that South Division Community Council is working on their own um, neighborhood district plan. Mm -hmm. And that, it, that would actually set the context for doing this. This would be the element of that. That's true. So it might be um, good for them to finish that district plan and while we're adopting their finalizing the streets policy. And then maybe here it might be more appropriate yet to put this request in there. We're not getting the car for the boards. Something to the effect of uh, taking the request until the neighborhood plans can take the streets to the county by units. Would that be appropriate? Yeah, that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would be. Well, you, you have to. It's like it's not going to be a good one. And then you guys can motion to address the one after that. So any other discussion from the committee on this? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to a public comment on N32. Um, please state your name and three minutes. Anybody have any comments on N32? Right, no public comments. Um, what is N32? I, I don't. There's no paper to tell me about N32. Oh, N32 is kind of handout. Um, it's yes, a I, you did have one before I showed up. <laughs> oh, comment from. Oh, it's the, it's the South Edition test. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll talk to you. <laughs> My name is Cheryl Richardson, and I've been working on the neighborhood plan as a part of a group. And uh, two years ago, uh, we found that traffic and noise were the number one challenge or concern of 100 people who attended a meeting, uh, just identifying, again, values and challenges, what we like and what we don't. Other thing, you know, there are other issues on the list, but traffic and noise was number one, and we focused on the arterial, A, C, I, and L. And that committee has wrapped its work. Uh, this um, resolution went to the full community council a month ago. There was no objection to this. And the council has been on record for a few decades now that A, C, I, and L are over designed for the speeds we need inside our neighborhood, and that uh, there are different things to do, but this is the easiest thing to do, is to go forward with the um, transportation demand management, uh, skinny streets, um, complete streets, you know, you can pick your, pick your language. But uh, it's time, and the complete streets policy won't make a difference to this. We're looking at alternatives and what can be done. And also the neighborhood plan, again, uh, to, to address your concerns, ma'am, is that um, we're on record. We've been on record for years. We're on record thus far in our community planning process. There's no use to Thank you. Um, do we have any other comments on this? We're on uh, the Okay, so we're going to be back at the consideration on this.
we have any objections to the motion. N55 is the final comment here. This uh, portion of this talks about the separation of the cup, and it also says this project should include what I think. Um, so, my guess is if you're looking at a project, you might be looking at that, but I would think it's something that the leader was pointed out in the purpose and need, but I don't know if too early. So, Anyway, that's the only reason it's there. It has the covering part of the engine that we're talking about the addition of bike lanes. And the common is for bike lanes. So, can you start for my clarification? Would, would the project not include bike lanes if we don't adopt this? Well, I'm assuming this means on street bike lanes, and we don't, all, we don't automatically install those. Okay. We looked at, I mean, the, the bike plan looked at, uh, it kind of came up with the bike compatible index. Speed of the, the Facility, the amount of, um, amount of right away that was available, and one other thing which I'm blanking on right now, and it came up with a number, and it basically said whether or not it made sense to put bike lanes in a certain area. So, some places it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have them on a high speed, high volume traffic roadway like the Seward Highway. It makes no sense for an or Dowling. So, it, it wouldn't automatically be included as something on any road project. But there would automatically be a study or a analysis done to determine whether or not it was appropriate. Yes. I don't, well, okay. I'm an expert on that, not me. I guess I would prefer, I, I am hesitant to say that something should include something because it's being asked for, I'd rather see the analysis actually demonstrate that it's more. Check those two. Right. Yes, yes. All in favor of bike lanes and anything, but we don't include requirements for sidewalk and curb, storm drain, all the phases of it. So I, you know, let's let the analysis play out. You know, just because it may not be on the bike plan doesn't mean we're not going to put it in there. It just means that we'll look at it, make the determination. And this will, this project will go through several rounds of uh, public engagement because it has to go through the context and set of solutions. I believe there will be plenty of time to on this as we hear from the design. They always go through, every project goes through several iterations. I don't think you can force that to happen. I mean, that in and of itself is a pretty good that. Yeah, so I think it's very bright for the project to also decide what attributes or characteristics of the project should be. What, what we've done with other comments that we're basically just saying at bike lanes that we, we've basically said we will forward on those comments to the project managers and when this project is moving so they'll know there is support for bike lanes on there and they'll know to look for that. So we haven't suggested adding any more yet. Just we'll forward those comments on so they know that there's some support for that. <coughs> She does that. It, sorry, I just want to point out that earlier in the comment response summary, there's a comment from staff to add into the Spinard project. Uh, project will include non motorized improvements. Um, if you'll notice, almost all the roadway projects in the tip include that same language on there. And that gives flexibility to the design engineers when they're going through to take a look at those when they're looking at the project. Maybe a proper, uh, appropriate response might be. Thank you. We'll ensure that it has non-tour costs. Yeah, what is private response for that? Yeah. We'll include or we'll assess? We'll include non-motorized improvements. And that can be whatever is needed. That's how it's been done for uh, the other one says this project would, Yeah. Fire read lane says this project would it also include non-motorized improvements. Whatever that might be. Very appropriate. Any, any other comments from the other comments? I think the comment majority of the 36 couples are going to address. Yeah. So um, we're going to um, open up N55 public comment. Just keep saying this. You have to state your name in two minutes. So if anybody wants to comment on N55. Okay, thank you. We're going to be 
Side or the dark side, whichever way you want to do it. Uh, so we're lucky enough to have him show up to replace Ms. Acton. Um, and he's been working with uh, Vivian uh, on the NTP for a long time. He's going to continue that effort. So he's going to present. And yay. So <laughs> 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 you match. It's, I know. It's not weird. <laughs> um, okay, just really quickly on the NTP. So staff and the consultants have been working really hard. I'm getting a lot of the modeling efforts done. Most of it's done. Um, and the fiscal constraint analysis information just kind of compiled. So the only thing that you'll be seeing here soon is a work session in November, uh, which we originally planned for October, but things have been taking a little longer. So instead of rushing things, we want to make sure everyone's comfortable and brought along on the committee. So in November timeframe, um, we're going to have a, another work session on the fiscal analysis where we actually bring you all the information and get you to kind of sit down and go over everything. So um, I hope you guys are here for November because that's going to be an intense work session. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that we have some kind of snacks or something provided um, <laughs> because I know we're going to lose a lot of people as we go along just because there's a lot. So we'll take breaks and everything. Don't worry about it. I promise. It'll be a fun time. Um, and then in December, we're going to start working on another work session with you to do an intro to the modeled projects. And that's basically what the TAC and Policy Committee approved a while ago, saying here are the different scenarios with the updated names and uh, model them. What does it look like on the network? So what we want to do is kind of introduce you to what is the process that we're going to be going through, looking at all that, kind of coming out with, the, uh, I don't want to say preferred alternative, but the final model network. Um, and so it's going to be a, a work session in December to start that. and then. There's probably going to be a couple more work sessions because that's another very lengthy process. Um, so uh, the next couple of months, uh, November, December, January, are probably going to be a, a lot. So I can't wait to see you guys there. Um, I have a question that the fiscal workshop, that's a follow-up to the one that happened in August or earlier? Yes. What date is that? We haven't determined it yet. When that date uh, has been determined, is there a way for the to the public to, to look it up? We can post it on our, our page, our website. 
<laughs> and now that someone's here to replace my inabilities, posting thing, we can get that posted on the Facebook page. So there and just to know, work sessions are not time for public testimony and things like that. That is just an event where everyone comes and works together. So uh, we'll make sure that everyone understands that. So we're off to any comments? For everybody. 100th Avenue between Minnesota and C Street was open this morning. So John Smith can get to Costco fast. <laughs> and hopefully it helped help traffic. Uh, any other comments? Okay. okay, we're at public comments. Do we have any comments from the public? Right. 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 